I'm so tickled with myself. Actually, I'm really not that tickled. So, the last time I got up this morning, which was at like, mm. a few minutes ago, he must woke me up. We were walking down the stairs and he said, they call me mommy. <laughs> and then I would try to go back to sleep. And I sat there and was like, okay, well, now I know the name of a good book. They call me mommy. And then I had, I even like did the chapters, all the things, uh, parenting pretend adults. I mean, I really, and at some point you just have to give up and you just get up. You find your Cafe Bustello and you can see defeat. I know, I'm up early. Like all my subscribers are like, oh, you're up so early. Oh, subscribers, we have a big talk we're gonna have today when Gina gets here at like 9.30 because the police issued a statement about some haste we've been following. <laughs> we're not talking about that this morning. Nope. This morning we're talking about people that call you mommy. So I belong to a person named Amos. He's nine and a half. He has autism. And he no sleep. So sleeping has been a problem for as long. Well, has it been a problem forever? Not forever, but for a while. I'd say at least five years, you can't sleep. Well, that might be worse than belonging to a person that can't sleep because I can sleep. I just don't sleep. Oh, shit. There's no milk. Dog on it. Amos, did you use up all the milk? Oh, there. Speaking of, they call me mommy. Who, can someone tell me who puts this amount of orange juice in the refrigerator? You know, I think I'll just put, a, let's see how much orange juice that is. Let's just check for fun. Here's a tablespoon. Let's pour the orange juice into the tablespoon. Let's see if it's a whole tablespoon. Nope. One tablespoon of orange juice coming up. We're gonna just put it back in there. They call me mommy. Yes, it's my husband. It's not even my children because they're not they're not here. I mean, you know what's in my refrigerator? milk from the Dollar General. Let's just look in here. Just for fun. There goes my intermittent fasting with that milk in my coffee, evidently. That's new. So in the refrigerator, this goes along with the storyline. We have several bottles of ketchup. We got some bacon. We got a cheeseburger. We have lots of make you see all these green bottles? This is all Amos's medicine. This medicine is all geared towards helping Amos sleep and behave or not have anxiety. It's probably the politically correct way to say it. I mean, no, no, if it's working. No. I heard the sound. You hear it? Sounds like the pipes are caving in. Well, evidently it's um it's my heat and my air conditioning system trying to work. So I heard yesterday that you're not supposed to let's go outside. Oh my sprinklers are on. Look at there, I didn't even know they worked. 
heard yesterday that if you want your house to be cooler, you don't actually turn down the air conditioning. Who knew that? Look at there. Huh, I have sprinklers. They work. So shocking. Oh, Kelly Moses. I have this patch on my chest because my nurse comes today. In case anybody's like, why is that thing on your chest? And I have my one of my favorite visors on because I've got to take a shower this morning. Trust me, I'm a vlogger. Somebody sent me this mug. Isn't that so nice? So, sleeping. It's light out already here. It's six in the morning. Is it not supposed to be light? I'm not really a good person to ask because I'm not usually up at six in the morning. I'm not one of those people that like gets up and exercises. I did think about it this morning. But my thought was, who the hell gets up to exercise in the morning? I mean, he, Amos has been up since 159. 159. He went to bed at 930 beside me. And got up at 2 for the day. A question you don't have to answer. You have a port. Yes, so I have a port. Just go ahead and talk about this for a second because people get so distracted. I have an autoimmune disease and every month for four, three days, my nurse comes and I get IVIG. I have this auto, autoimmune disease called MOG. And basically what happened was I lost all my vision. But it came back for the most part. So I do that every month with Nurse Gina, who at least is fun and it gives us good entertainment. So Amos got up at two for the day and I let him come downstairs. We did have, we had a teensy bit of success yesterday, I would just like to say. Oh, welcome, Sandra. He has been in the living room, the main living room, holding court for a few months. And we just put a new bookcase in his, in the playroom that's kind of meant for him. And Dern, if he, Last yesterday, I bought these containers at Home Goods. I mean, anybody that knows me knows I love a Home Goods. Okay, Kyler Linda would like to say something to y'all <laughs> from a Nigerian cafe, I'm sure. Good morning. I'm looking for a serious relationship here. I'm tired of being single. <laughs> well, Kyler, unfortunately for you, Mr. You've been banned from the page. You ain't gonna find any love in life today. New no Surrey Bobby Kyler. God. I mean, are they, are they bots? Are they real people? Okay, I'm gonna show you what's happening. So our success was that Amos is back in his own playroom, which is great. Will he nap during the day? No, I'm not gonna let that fool nap. Are you crazy? No, no napping. Aha. Uh -huh. Hi, Mommy. What you doing? Is the sky gray? Is the sky gray? Is it time to go back night night? No. What are you building? A mini finger shredder. Mini figure shredder? Yes. Mm. So I bought these at Home Goods, these little and put mini figures in them. And I told him he couldn't play with them unless he sat in here. I know. I mean, I'm real happy with this thing. Downey's Preservation. It's a business in my town. Built it to fit all his books and Legos and got the height right. Oh, it's just fantastic. So anyway, that is success. We've had a teensy, teensy bit of success. Goodbye, mini figure shredder, mommy. Oh, he real cute. 
I mean, uh, literally on the way down the stairs this morning, he said, they call me mommy. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so anyway, we haven't been doing his sleep medicine at night because he takes liquid and we need to teach him to swallow pills. And we've tried a couple times, but I need to try harder because he threw up Fruit Loops two times that we tried it because he chewed the pill by accident and it tasted terrible. He's been on Buspirone, Trazodone, Guanfacine, and we're moving from Buspirone to an antipsychotic, which is such a terrible, the word antipsychotic sounds awful, doesn't it? But anyway, I haven't started it yet because when you start it, you gotta be ready to start it, you know? And then we're also working on the sleeping thing. So he's in a rollaway bed beside our bed. I fall asleep with them. And he, so he's done better, but this is what happens. So my friend Mary Scott yesterday was trying to help me. And she was like, well, what if you do this? I was like, okay, well, I've been doing this for five freaking years unsuccessfully. So clearly I do need help, but maybe like an elephant tranquilizer. So he's sleeping exactly how he was sleeping. He's in his own bed, but he does not sleep all night. He sleeps a few hours and then he's just up for the day. Now, if he sleeps in our bed with me, the best sleep he has is if he and I sleep alone with no husband, which is not ideal. Though somebody mentioned you could just have conjugal visits and just not worry about it. That's gonna be my next option other than the elephant tranquilizer. So if he sleeps in the bed with me, he sleeps all night long and sleeps great. I mean, it's like he's a kangaroo. Good morning from Italy. Hey, Bobby, that's my brother-in-law. I would just like to say that I should get credit for drinking coffee with sweet and low in it and not 10 buckets of sugar move him to the door than his own room if uh, Katie let me tell you something this ain't the problem the problem is he does not sleep in the bed so uh, ultimately you have to decide do you want to sleep or do you want to no sleep Me want to sleep. Yeah. That's what I've learned. I like to sleep. Yeah, I mean, he can't sleep in our bed forever. Like, certainly no 25-year-old man is going to be in my bed. <laughs> I'll never make it. <laughs> yeah, pick sleep. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. And you know... I know people love to give advice. And let me tell you what, my, I was basically like, who makes these real good pizzas? Is it Emilio, California Pizza Kitchen? I was like the expert. And now I'm the pizza hut. I'm reliable. I know a little bit. <laughs> I'm the pizza hut. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, you just cannot, what did he do? What's he do when Mary is here or daddy? He sleeps fine. Well, with daddy, he sometimes goes and gets in the bed with him, but he sleeps fine. This is like a attachment to mommy because mommy is here. He, he loves mommy. He wants mommy. He needs mommy. He just mommy. Mommy, 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 mommy. I was putting up my thing. Where did they go? I always put up my link. Oh, there it is. I gotta, I'm gonna click it. Pin comment. Yeah, I'm security blanket. You had a pop up Lululemon ad right now or l earlier. I don't think Facebook lets me have ads on live videos. They don't trust me. 
We are not trying to tell you what to do. We're just trying to help. <laughs> well, that is nice, and I appreciate it. <laughs> but it's like telling um, Michael Jordan how to, like, make a foul shot. <laughs> but I guess he was good at them. <laughs> I tickle myself. How about wine for mommy? I ain't sleeping any wine. If I started drinking wine, I... and now I've lost that. What in the world? You can practice swallowing meds like Tic Tacs or Sweet Tarts. Yes, I know about this swallowing, but he doesn't like the taste of a Tic Tac. I think the only thing we could practice with are sprinkles. And we do melatonins. You bought your daughter bunk beds so she could sleep at the top and me at the bottom. <laughs> I don't like, last night he was like, hold your hand. So I held his hand to his bed. And then he said, you're in the wrong bed. And I just got in his bed. He went to sleep. I got in my bed. And at 1.59, he was up for the day. Well, the, it was hard for him to go to sleep with the meds for ADHD, different flavors of Tic Tacs. So what you have to do is have Thomas put him to bed, problem solved. No, he still gets in bed with Thomas. How about Skittles? I just want to y'all to pretend for a minute with any advice you give me, I want you to pretend that I have an autistic cat. So anything you suggest, I want you to think about it being given to an autistic cat. Like get your cat to swallow peas, your cat to take a Tic Tac, putting it in pudding. Do cats eat pudding? No. He must know eat pudding. It's not a replay bit, Milligan. I'm right here. Watching the world wake up. Thank goodness I have y'all because I would be so lonely if I did not. My husband was little. They used M&Ms to teach him to swallow. My son throws everything up. Yes. Yes. See, you have an autistic cat too, I bet. Yes. They throw things up. This is what they do. It has to be frustrating. Could you talk to the pharmacist to make it into a liquid? Boy, yes, I can. So we have been doing liquid medicine for five years, but the problem is you get bigger and older, you need more and more liquid medicine. So then you can't get, and you can't do time release. So the sleeping business, you could do some time release stuff that we can't do because he takes liquid. My cat doesn't need anything mushy. No yogurt, no pudding. No mac and cheese. No nothing. <laughs> yeah, like fur balls. That's right. <laughs> I mean, y'all, I used to be a good parent. I'm telling you, I had this shut down. I was good in milk. No, he. Both of you need each other more than you realize. And no, I do not need him. How do you handle the lack of sleep daily? Well, I. That's a good question. I don't because he's been sleeping in the bed with me. But this week, we were back home. We had been at the beach. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to. Balls to the wall. I'm going to put him a patch. What? Is there a sleeping patch? Now tell me this. I'll invite you to join me live on this video, Julia Davis. Does your autistic cat eat ice cream? Well, I don't want to give my autistic cat ice cream every night before he goes to bed with pills in it. Because then his teeth will rot out. And that's bad. Mmm. But I want to hear more about this patch. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Cheryl. 
Tales from the Pizza Hut Porch. Autistic mommy. Um, so I think we're just back to letting him sleep in the bed. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have a king size bed. Didn't Angelina and Brad Pitt have like some extra size king size bed? Like a room that's just filled up with a bed. What if you slept in the roll up and made him sleep somewhere else? Oh, Katie, the autistic cat comes and gets in the roll up with me. So then you're really not sleeping well when you sleep with the cat and the autistic. I mean, I, I'm telling y'all, I have a PhD in education. I mean, I have some research strategies. I have tried things. I'm letting y'all practice. This is when you practice, you just, mm, it's like being a mother-in-law. You're practicing being a mother-in-law. You're, you're just listening and you're saying nothing. For me, it's going to be, I'm going to have some daughter-in-law that puts like my newborn grandson in like a three-piece suit and I'm going to feel physically ill. I'm going to be like, can he wear a bubble or a day gown? And they're going to be like, no, he's going to wear a suit. How does Mary do it? Our nanny? Well, she's not his mother. So he doesn't care about sleeping with her. The autistic cat doesn't know that person. So the autistic cat doesn't want to sleep with that person. The autistic cat wants to sleep with his mother. We had to get a king size bed. My son slept with us till he was 12. It was awful. Now, see, I love you, Marie. That's a wonderful thing to say. Can you and Amos move in his room? He has a double bed. And I don't, want to, I don't want to sleep in his room. I want to sleep in my own room. I feel like the person that has to sleep with Amos gets to pick the bed. <laughs> and I don't think my husband disagrees. We just hate to give it up. Like give up that we're going to become Lucy and Ricky Ricardo in our own beds. And mainly because I think people judge you. If you don't sleep together, you're going to get divorced. And what do I care? We had a bigger than king size bed. What? What is this? We tried everything you tried and nothing worked until she was ready. I have the same issue. Emma will only sleep with me in our bed. Oh, thank you for saying that, Amy. See, sometimes you just want to hear somebody say, oh, I understand. I know why you drink Mountain Dew. When I was pregnant with number five, we got a king bed. Well, I don't know how in the hell y'all all fit in there. A California king bed. Hmm. Well, now these are, these are good suggestions. He will not be sleeping with you until you're 12. Oh my gosh. You basically just put my face on a voodoo doll by saying that. You know damn well he's going to be in there now. We need sleep to survive. Yes. Now this, that is... That is someone who under, they also have an autistic cat. You need sleep to survive. And that's what my pediatric psychiatrist at Duke Autism said. Dr. Copeland, who I love, and I think I've talked about him so much, he's not taking new patients, so don't get upset. But he is like, you know what? We can, we can only work on one thing at a time, and we have to decide what the most important thing is. And what he and I decided a while ago was met, getting his medicine right is the most important. Because he will sleep if this happens. So we just had to put that aside. So this week, I just felt like I had a little bit of, you know, ability to try it again. And what I've discovered is it no work. My husband and I don't have an autistic cat. We sleep separately are happily married. Oh, well, see, there you go. Look, and I'm going to leave those, all these cabinets open for all you people with OCD. <laughs> hmm.
ready to go night night? No. Are you tired? No. You're not? Who do you have there? I'm you take them all out and then what? We'll clean up. Then you're gonna clean up? No. Yes, you are. No, you're no. Yes, you Get off the fan. I'm, I'm, I mean, the playroom. Are you telling me to get out of the playroom? Yeah. Good. I'm happy to get out. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he is cute. He really is cute. Huh? Huh? So is this about him not sleeping? Is he on ADHD meds? Yes. No, this is just a, are those new chairs? No, they're not new chairs. So they're old chairs that we got at Nows and Company in Wilson a while ago. And we had them in our old house. And then in this new house, we didn't really have, we had them in there. And then we had this giant, if y'all remember, we had this giant play structure for Amos to climb on. So we moved them and I gave them to my parents. We haul them to the beach. Well, they don't like them. So then I was like, well, crap, I'm going to get those suckers back. So then we get them back. And now we've put them back up in this room. We play this thing, game called moving furniture. It's hard being their person. Yeah, it is hard being the person. They call me mommy. It's a hard person to be. What's the schedule for October? So... I have the subscriber group. I put up the link. <clears throat> it's $5 a month. It's like 17 cents a day. I mean, you can't even feed an autistic cat for that much. And somebody's going to send me some hate message over that analogy. And my subs I'm having a subscriber weekend. So I had one last year. Right? Is it last year or the year before? Let's see. What's... What what the month is it was what Amos calls a year ago. He always says, what the month is it? He's been asking me what month it is because I told him that we were going to go on a trip in July. And I keep saying, it's June. And he's like, when it's July, we're going to go something, something. I'm like, hmm. it's, we're going to skip July. I think it's a good name for the book too. They call me mommy. So anyway, October 13th through 15th is my subscriber weekend um, in Edenton. We, I think we'll have about 200 folks here. I picked a weekend this time where there's no big event going on, except we are going to be included in Shrimp by the Bay. So Thursday night's an add-on, and we're going to have, is there anywhere left to stay that weekend? Yes, there are still rooms left, because a lot of people are staying with each other, you know, blah, blah, blah. But there are still rooms left at the... Um, that darn place called not the lord's proprietors the captain's quarters granville queen uh la, 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 la. yes there's still rooms left mm -hmm. the inn on broad street terry said i'll move out they can stay at my house Terry, you better watch out. You can't subscribe six months at a time. You just subscribe. It's month to month. It's kind of like Netflix. Yeah. Your husband has myasthenia gravis. Oh, somebody in my family has that. Sleeps because of congestion. I'll be darned. Try melatonin. Uh, hello. I basically have stock in melatonin. <laughs> Adrian, melatonin, wood. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, Amos doesn't have to sleep with me. But if he doesn't sleep with me, he does not sleep. No sleep. Um, so that weekend, Thursday night, we're going to have a cocktail party at a historic house on a porch which is going to be fun. 
And we also are going to take a ride on the new ferry in town, which is going to be fun over the weekend. We're going to go have a sip and see. So their stores are going to stay open late one night just for my people so they can do a little bit of shopping at all these awesome places. And then we're going to have a dinner at my house. And then we're going to have a cookout lunch at my family house, my in-laws, who people love. And then what else are we going to do? Oh, we're going to, oh, I mean, we have lots of fun plans. Trolleys involved, boats involved, Adrian's husband involved. It's going to be good times down East Preservation. We have, I have a, a shuttle driver lined up for the weekend. I want to come but can't do the subscriber on my phone. Why can't I send you a check for the year? And when you can, you can set up my phone for me. Well, Miriam, let me think of a way to say that. It would be like, pretend I'm Joanna Gaines. Clearly, I'm not. And you want to buy my book at Target. I, you, you have to pay Target. You can't pay me. Like, no matter, if you go into Target and say, I'm just going to give Joanna a check in October, it no work like that. So, Facebook pays me. So, you have to pay Facebook. You just click the subscribe button. That's all you have to do. It's right there. If you cannot do that from your phone, you could try from your computer. If you don't have a computer, you can go to a public library where you have access to one for free. Or an iPad. <gasps> Natalie's coming. This will be my first time. Um, you know, it was really... Yes, Pinky, there are spaces available for subscribers. I know, Kim. I'm sorry y'all are going to be here. Any golfing? Yes, so last year we set up a golf game. Um, I don't know if any women played, but husbands played. Husbands played, which was fun. How long have you been up with Amos? Well... Let's see. He got up at... Oh, Wendy, I'm so glad. Wendy was on my cruise. <laughs> Where I am going to plan a cruise. I'm just feeling a little overwhelmed. I have a son that's going to be a senior in high school. And it's teensy bit stressful. I don't know why. I'm not a real stressy type either. Hello from Connecticut. Oh, Debbie, you need to come for the weekend. You can come back to your roots. Um, anyway, it'll be fun. It was fun. I think people had a really good time. Yes. And, uh, anyway, it's fun. And it's fun to see Edenton. Edenton is on the Albemarle Sound. And how, I have a friend that wants to come, but she's not a subscriber. She can just come with you because you are. That's how it works. like taking a guest to the country club so there's no membership fee maybe next year I hope so you're up at five every day because of your cats on the spectrum <laughs> we watched the kindergarten video the other day oh did you I know so Terry and I had children in preschool together well, in kindergarten. And, I mean, they're full on good. And she's going to lose two. She has twins. It's, um, it feels like a big deal. How are you going to host dinner at your house? Katie, you have a lot of questions for me. Katie, I had dinner at my house at my last subscriber weekend. So, you see my yard? Hello, tables and chairs. And Old Colony catering. There are people that had never had banana pudding. And I promise you, one person from California had those suckers shoved in her purse. We had chicken left over, barbecue left over. We ain't had no banana pudding left over. No sirree bobby. Those people love that stuff. Suzette, was it you? I don't know if Suzette's on here. Thank you for being a caring and kind-hearted woman. Oh, well, that's so nice. Alexander's going to Ohio. Ohio, that's where my kin are. Mm -hmm. Please have banana pudding. 
We're having it. I have cats. You're up at 4.30. Are they real cats or artistic cats? If I had cats and they woke me up at 4.30, you know what I'd do with those fools? I'd lock them out of the cat door. Yeah. If I could lock Amos out, I would. But then somebody would report me to something. Though I can't imagine that they would. I'd love for them to try to find a, some family that's interested in keeping, a, keeping Amos. <laughs> you have real cats. <laughs> you make banana pudding all the time. I don't. I'm 30 minutes from Atlantic Beach. Oh, I'm heading there today or tomorrow. I think. I'm going to go have dinner with my parents tonight, and I don't know where they're going to be yet because they don't know where they're going to be. Um, yesterday was the anniversary of my big brother's death, and the word anniversary sort of like conjures up sweet, nice memories, but... Come on, Janine. You're a new subscriber and you have family in Edenton. We'll get your fanny here. And I didn't get to see him yesterday because my nurse was here. So I'm going to go see him today. Katie has a lot of questions because she's an event planner. <gasps> You're going to Hatteras Friday. Oh, I love some Hatteras. We would keep Amos. Well, I mean, I'm not giving him away, but I could use a little. I wish he had somebody he'd like to go visit a bunch for like a week. Um, I mean, is it, is it smoke? Is that why it's hazy? Or Amos said the sky is gray. So we're going to go to deepest sympathy. Oh, it's been a long time now, 33 years. So Adam died when I was 15 and he was 19. So 33 years, he's been gone twice as long as I knew him. That is the weirdest thing to wrap your mind around. And he was 19, so my oldest son will be 18 in December. And I'm like, how is that going to be when he's 19? I bet that's going to kind of bring on some new feelings and emotions, you know? Yeah, it's sad. It, it really is sad. Um... Does Amos sleep in the car? You mean at night? <laughs> no. No, he doesn't sleep in the car. He's a cat. I'm telling you, he doesn't sleep. He had cancer, a really, really rare cancer called fibroblastic histiocytoma, something, something, something. At the time, only six people in the world had been diagnosed with it. It took a long time to get a diagnosis. Um, so anyway... It was 19, was it 19, I guess it was 1990, yeah, 1990. He was great, um, you know, and even if he, I still would have said that. I mean, he and I were super tight, and um, he was so handsome and funny and nice and just, oh, here's a picture of him right here I'm behind my couch show you. Just, he was just the kind of person that everybody liked, you know? I've never been that kind of person. <laughs> Not that people don't like me, but hold on, can you see him? But he was. He really was. Funny and easy and just, you know, he was great. Great, great, great. Yeah, and I was saying yesterday, you know, I think a lot of people don't, um, well, I'm not trying to get it off my chest, Sandy. I mean, I don't need to, like, say it to the whole internet, you know. But I think the reason I push through to say it is because I, I feel like there are people that are out there alone. And there is something about having a vlog and, you know, sitting here and being able to talk to a thousand people at 6 a.m. is that, have this platform and I can share things and laugh and talk and hear people and it is nice 
But there are other people that are all by themselves and lonely, like maybe they have their own autistic cat and they are by themselves, you know, or they don't have anybody to talk to. And I guess I want them to know, like, boy, you're not alone. And you can do this. We can do hard things. And life just does not, I know people see me in my Pizza Hut visor and think, oh, she's got it all together. Her life is so easy. She lives on the water. She's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like, everybody's got some hard stuff, you know? I never talk about personal issues. Maybe I should. You know, I think you should. And I'll tell you that I didn't either. And I think that's what kind of got me to this place because I, after Adam died, I, in my brain, thought to myself, um, well, God, this is really, God let lets one thing bad happen to everybody, and I got mine out of the way. And I would drive too fast or make decisions that were probably a little bit sketch because I just thought, well, nothing's going to happen to me because God wouldn't do that to my parents, right? Because I've already gotten my bad thing. Well, then my very best friend got cancer and we were seniors in high school. So this was three years later, not quite three years later. And she died our freshman year in college. And that's when I realized I was wrong. And the, the rule that I had made for my head was not right. And things kept happening, you know, real life kept happening. You lose friends in different ways, real life. And my way of dealing with it was to not deal with it. I just sort of stuffed down this hurt and grief and heartache and put on a big smile and carried on. You know, I got married, I had children. I just did everything that I was going to do. In my brain, though, I didn't, I, I just thought, well, I'm not going to have joy again. I'm happy, but I'm not going to have real joy. And then when Skooky in there showed up, he, um, Amos, and I had this fourth child who was not the child I had ordered. I had gone to McDonald's and ordered a, you know, bacon burglar and I got a fish sandwich and I don't I like fish sandwiches but I had in my brain I was getting a bacon burglar so I had to really come to terms with what what is this going to mean for me you know um, and what I realized and I've done a TEDx talk on this but what I realized is I had been stuffing down this heartache, heartache and grief and hurt, and I didn't have any more room. I was, it was like the jar was full of green beans, and you're canning, and you got to get you a new can because there ain't any more room. And so I started writing, and I should have been doing videos, what I should have been doing. I probably have eight zillion followers, but I didn't. I was writing, did a little video, but I, in that first couple years, I really grieved a lot. And I realized I hadn't grieved for this brother of mine, you know, and I made a real point to talk about it openly. And so people, when they say like, it's cathartic for you, I know it's nice. It's not nice. No one likes to air their heart to anybody. It is not nice. I do it the same way that other people run marathons. (laughs) I don't run marathons but maybe someday I shall. Like, I can't. Makes me so tired. Um, I do it because it's good for me, you know? And because I want other people to know, like, I shouldn't stuff this down for 20 years because that's what she did, and I really missed out on a lot for doing that, you know? And so with Amos, there wasn't any more room to pretend And it happens. People have children with disabilities and they smile and they don't complain and they just pretend everything is hunky-dory. And I think inside they must just be dying. 
And I, I couldn't do that. Like, I have too much to live for. And I think the, the grieving Adam, the grieving having a child with a disability, and there are, there are people out there that think that's really bad to say. You can't, you know, they, and maybe they have autism themselves. How could you grieve me? Well, I can just tell you that you can't tell somebody else how they feel. Um, so I can't help the way I felt, you know, and I love Amos. And if you offered me a whole room full of nine and a half year old boys, I wouldn't have to think one second before I plucked him out of it. I love him. I feel so honored to be his mother and our family. We're so thankful that he's in our family. But that doesn't mean that it's not hard, you know? And I realize if it's hard for us, it's got to be super hard for other people, you know? Because it's, it's hard. It's hard. I think we grieve what wasn't. Yeah, I think so too, Kimberly. I think so too. I think you, I imagine this fourth child and sometimes when like yesterday we went to the pool and, um, these kids were playing baseball, you know, Amos's age. And I was trying to help him kind of play with them because he wanted to, he wants to be with other kids, but like the rules of a game, it's all too much, you know? And sometimes you just want to go to a pool and have somebody play a game with everybody else. Or I want to be able to drop him off at camp for two weeks and have him write me a letter. But that's not our path. And it doesn't mean I can't miss it, but our path's good. You know, so it's just, um, it's a real dichotomy of feelings. It's a real dichotomy. Anyway, so if you're a subscriber, Gina's coming. Nurse Gina will be here. Nurse Gina and I are problem solvers. She'll be here at 930. I'm going to be showered and prepared for my day. Oh my God, that's in three freaking hours. What am I going to do for the next three hours? To be honest, I think I'm going to lay on the couch and watch crime shows. And we're going to be talking about, well, one thing we're going to be talking about is what's been happening in Alabama. Remember Forrest Gump? And Jenny needs to come back to Alabama. <laughs> Carry on, my friends. Carry on.